Welcome back to Panther Pod, the podcast where we interview the campus's most requested people for your viewing entertainment. I'm your host, Max Ortiz, and this is your co-host, Mauricio Aguilar. And, and today's today guest <laughs> is Keyshawn. How are you doing, Keyshawn? I'm good. The ASB guys? president. Right. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yeah? Yeah. So as part of being the ASB president, you must be like a really busy person on campus, right? Yeah, it takes up a lot of time. You're like hearing from, what was it, like from 7 to, from, from when the school starts? From 7.30 to 6 every day, yeah. From like when the school starts to when mm -hmm. it closes. When it closes. Yeah, me and the custodians are the last people here. You made <laughs> friends with them? <laughs> yeah, I have actually, because I, I need their help for a lot of things. So yeah, we're pretty. So what are some of the activities that require you to stay after school? Um, football, poster making, um, PTSA, um, whatever everyone else needs help with um, after school sometimes if Miss Green is gone I'll help around campus with whatever you just ask and I'll help yeah so how long have you been part of ASB um, this is my second year and since from when you, from the moment you started in ASB was your goal to be president no it wasn't because at first it was really it was a lot of people and I was like I don't think I can you thought it was too much competition? I don't think I can, no. It wasn't the competition thing. It's never a competition thing. I just felt like it was a lot of people and me trying to be in charge of a bunch of people or like trying to be not over a bunch of people, but oversee things. And I just didn't think I could do that. But I grew and um, I took a lot of different opportunities as far as helping me speak and with listening skills and it helped out. So I was able to overcome that part. So what motivated you to join ASB? Um... I just wanted to be involved in school more and my parents um, job hours changed so I was here more and it was like I'm just not gonna hang around campus and do nothing and get in trouble I was like I uh -oh. should do something that's gonna help me out and my future so I decided to join ASB and I had a lot of friends in ASB so you were like even before ASB were you already staying after school yeah I was so you were like I might as well just actually yeah, just, just might join as well something do something contribute. instead of sit here and, yeah so as the ASB president, you said you have to have a separate phone number? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do have a separate phone number because um, I get a lot of different text messages. And we also have um, people outside of school that are doing things in Long Beach that try to reach out to us that want to come and speak on campus. And so, you know, just as a personal thing, I don't want them to have my personal number. Yeah. And if I need to speak with Ms. Green about it, I can just go and show it to her and then she can run it by administration. So it's kind of like your business number? Yeah. Something so like, like so you get messages from not just things inside of school, but also outside of school? Yeah. So where did you uh, used to have your personal phone number out there or from the start where you're like, I'm going to have a second number? I used to give it to the kids in ASB, but it just got to be too much. Too hectic? Yeah. I try to sleep and it's like going crazy. <laughs> so, and I can't turn it off because my parents try to contact me. So it, it just, I have to separate it. So how was it getting a second phone number? Like, did you have to go to your mobile carrier and ask no, for a uh, second number? So we use Google a lot here at school. So I use, uh, it's like Google phone or Google number. Oh. And it just, you have the number and the messages come over. But you can mute them or yeah. keep them silent. Yeah. And I check them about three times a day. So as ASB president, is it like, is ASB a club? Is it an activity um, you join a, after it, school only? It, or? It's a club. Um, you can join. We have, um, it's actually a class we have, two periods, but it's full. So we have it as a club. And if you want to come and help, and you can, you can just be a part of the club. And you can get um, volunteer hours for that. Is there certain requirements you have to have? or can you To be in the club? Yeah. No, not at all. So what are some big motivators for why people should join the club? Um, if you wanted to, like, recruit anyone. It just looks good, you know, um, on resumes. Um you get to meet a lot of different people. Like when I started ASB, I've met so many more people and I've connected with a lot more staff and you just feel more comfortable on campus and more um, really involved. Like you feel more involved when you know more people instead of just a small group of people. You can, you know, say hi to everyone when you're walking around. And then like really boost your school spirit. Yeah, school spirit um, has definitely gone up a lot since I've joined. So how so joining ASB is just a club anyone can join. Mm -hmm. How would someone go to 
if they want to strive for president, how would they? Um, would you they would have that? to. Well, to be anyone on board, you have to be um, in ASB a year before, just so you get the feel of it and you can get everything down. And whoever is in the position already, when they, you know, most of them are seniors. So when we leave, whoever's shadowing us, they can shadow, and so they get the feel of everything, and then they can come and take that place. In so. The summer. In ASB, you said it looks really good on resumes. Yes. So you're a senior, right? Yes. And you're doing college applications and all yes, that? Yes, and that's really important right now. So everyone should be on that right so now. So have you used ASB in any of your college applications uh, to give yourself yes. like a boost? I've, I put ASB on everything. Every Anything I do, I put it on there. It helps out. It just shows that, you know, your leader, whether you're president or just a member or a club member, it shows that you're a leader and you're very helpful. So... so <laughs> so what are your plans after high school where do you plan to um, go um long beach city um for my two years and I, i've been offered um scholarship money for that and then i want to work with kids so the program well my major that i'm going to major in is something it's going to be something with kids so if i main the maintain the 2.0 i get automatically transfer it to cal state long beach after those two years right so you told us about the scholarship uh earlier um, in a pre-interview, could you explain how you got oh, that? Okay, so in 11th grade, um, I'm at IB, so there's this program with uh, a lot of Rotarians and business owners in Long Beach, and they take 11th graders from different schools in Long Beach, and then they take us up to the mountains, and we they scramble us all together, and we have to make an invention, and it's about two and a half days, and we have to come up with a script, um, a product, and pricing and it's like a real business that we're making up there and then we have to present it in front of a bunch of business owners and judges and um my team got second place and so i was offered me and my team we were offered money for um that when we go to college so so um <laughs> i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> it's like i was thinking about it and then i heard you got second place and i was like damn that's that's impressive <laughs> So what was the invention again? Um, okay. So everyone is, is always on their phone. So yeah. I, I came up with the idea of a phone case um, that in the light it can charge on its own or outside in the sun. So and like it also, power. Yeah, exactly. And it has um, a light on the front of the f phone. So like if you're taking a picture in the dark or a video, you don't have to turn on the light or, you know, your yeah. brightness up. You just turn the light on and that helps. And, you know, everyone's always on their phone and using those too. Yeah. So it was a pretty... Um, big thing up there when I presented that to them and they all liked it. The, everyone's invention was good. I loved all of them. They were, they were all really nice. Yeah, they were great. Don't want to throw anybody under the bus right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were, they were all really good. And we had um, a lot of good um, backups. Like if, you know, some people had the same thing, we had to switch it up. So it was a lot of good backups. There was a lot and we had to memorize the scripts and it was pretty fun. I would recommend that to any 11th grader now when that opportunity comes to take it. Was the competition like really competitive? Uh, no. no. We did a lot of activities all together and we went to the campfire, we went hiking, we played games. It was really cold, but we enjoyed it. There was great food. We had fun on the way there and back. We got to see snow and watch movies. It was it was really fun. What so was the most memorable activity that you did? Or was it the, um, the contest <laughs> itself? <laughs> okay, so they have zip lining, and I'm, like, terribly afraid of heights, right? So um, they're like, get up there, do it. So I get up there, and I look down at everybody, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't do this. <laughs> but the guy is not letting me down, so he's, like, pulling the string. So I'm, like, slowly coming, but you can only <laughs> imagine how loud I was screaming. So <laughs> everyone's down there laughing at me, and I'm up there screaming, and I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm going to do it. I did it, and it was fun, and I was like, okay, I can definitely do that again. So, you know, you just have to overcome your fears, but that was my thing they talked about the whole time. Every time they see me, they would just be like, you were really screaming, and like, yeah, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't do it, but I, I did. It was fun. Sounds like a little story of how to overcome your fears. Yes, yes. Something uh, one of our friends needs to learn. Oh, yeah. We've been 18. trying to get him to go to Six Flags. Yeah. 18 and still scared of rides. Uh, you know? Well, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> So you r you did uh, bring up that you wanted to be involved in school as a job, like when you get older, and that's when you wanted yes. to go to LBCC? Yes. Would you say that ASB really, like, influenced your decision into um, why you want to be into that definitely, job field? Definitely, definitely. Um, I encounter a lot of staff throughout, like, if I'm in the office signing papers or talking to Ms. Green or 
Um, I have anything else to do. They're in and out of the hallway all day, and their jobs are pretty pretty cool. So, like, you, you've seen them work, and you're like, yeah, I want to do that? And yeah, you've also worked with them? Um, alongside them, or I've yeah. helped them do stuff, yeah. So, before ASB, did you have an, an idea of what you wanted to do? Or was it until you got into ASB that um, you like really found yourself? So, I thought that I could cook. I thought, uh-huh. <laughs> and um, that's what I wanted to do. But then I realized, no, that's so not the only thing I want to do. And I have a really big family, and it's a lot of kids. And I realized I'm always around kids. And I've also had a previous job where I was a coordinator over about 70 kids. And I really enjoyed that. And I was like, I like kids. Like, that's something that I could do. And I'm in ASB, and um, I work alongside Miss Green, and that's something that she's done her whole life. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, I like I can work with kids. There's some people that um that I've talked to that still don't know what they want to be. Could you give like any like <coughs> like motivation or like um, kind of like tips to like <laughs> everyone find that? is everyone is different. Like I said, I thought that I wanted to be a chef, but then I opened my eyes and I'm like, you're always with kids. You're working with kids. What you do now, you know, you're working with other kids your age. And, um, you know, I just want to help. Like, I see a lot of kids who have potential, but, you know, at home they're not being told that sometimes. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, um, I want to be there. You know, you can do this. You got it. Stuff like that. So with other people, whatever um, whatever you feel like you can do, you should be able to um, pursue that as a career. So but I always, have, like really always have a backup. Yeah. I always have a backup. So you should always, like, pursue something you're really passionate about. Like, yes. you always liked helping people. Yes. And you kind of wanted to be, like, an influencer. Yes. Instead of, like, Ex- our next generation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I have younger, I have two younger brothers and a sister who look up to me. And so it's, like, I want to lead by example to them as well. So, like, when you found your career, you, the big motivator in it was you want to be really helpful and not money, right? So what would you say to those who um, only want a career for their money and don't really uh, have any passion So for my it? grandma actually told me this. She was a nurse in the past, and back then it was, like, really crazy. So now she's a pharmacist, and she tells me every day, she says, you don't want to wake up every morning and say, ugh, I hate having to go to this job. You know, you want to go. I'm like, okay, I'm going to work, and, you know, you can have fun at work. You don't ever yeah. want to get up and have to hate going to your job every day. You should never do it. It may pay great, but if you don't like it, just it's something else out there that may pay even better that you're going to enjoy. So take that opportunity. Don't do something just because of the pay. So think of a job as like a privilege and not a necessity, yeah. kind of, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Should we do our, our <laughs> mid segue where we ask him the song? Yeah. All right. Well, not just songs. All right, Keyshawn, if you want to put anybody on to anything, um, to any top five New things segment. It's called... Put you put, on. Put somebody on. If you can put <laughs> big, bold letterings, just like put somebody on. We have a green yeah. screen right here. <laughs> um, that's it could funny. Be music, movies, school activities, mm. a class, your club, anything. Movies. I like a lot of action movies. So like The Mechanic, The Transporter. Those are like my favorite. I'm like a really big German car person. So oh. like Audis and the <clears throat> BMWs. Like I like watching stuff like that. Um, music. Um, <laughs> I listen to a lot of oldies, so I don't think oh, yeah, they want to hear that. No, I got some banger oldies. Like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's I, I really like a lot of action movies, like uh, Fast and Furious. I'm d- I just really like oh. cars. So so you're a big car person. Yeah, I'm a big car person. I'm gonna get put onto the mechanic. I'm gonna have to look <laughs> the it mechanic up. and the transporter are very good movies. I think you should watch. When so you what? Um, you said you listen to a lot of oldies. A lot of oldies. Can you give me like one of your favorites? My favorite. Um, I spend a lot of time with my great grandpa before he um, he passed, and it's it's. Um, I think the band was called Heat Wave, and it's Always and Forever. That's like one of my favorite songs that we would listen to together. I'll write that down real quick. <laughs> Heat Wave by. <laughs> <laughs> Heat Wave. What was the name of the song? Always and Forever. Why did that song stand out to you? Um, It's basically what they're saying in the song is like, you know, always and forever, you know, um, whoever you have a bond with, it's going to be like that. You know, that's something that I listened to with my grandpa. And so when he passed, it's like, that's what, you know, I have a lot of his stuff when he passed, I kept, Mm -hmm. but the song, it's like, you know, 
it's holds something a lot of that personal it holds value. a lot of personal value. Yeah. Was he yeah. one of your role models? Um, yes, he was actually. Because it was just him and my dad, and you know, they're they're really big um, influences in my life. All right, Keyshawn, thank you for putting us on. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you're you welcome. for that you're song I'll request. I'll make sure to listen to uh, one Always more time. Forever. Always okay. and Forever okay. by Heat Wave. Okay. I'll carry that song out. I'll put everybody onto it as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you've always been a, a Long Beach person. Were you born here? Um, no, I was actually born in L.A. That's where I lived before. Um, I moved here in third grade. Oh. I went to Los Cerritos, and then I um, got promoted from there, and I went to Hughes, and then I came here. So um, why did you choose Jordan specifically? What stood out? Um, I live in Bixby, so that's kind of closest. And... Oh, yeah. um, when we were in eighth grade and they were like, you know, pick whatever school you want to go to. I didn't really take it serious. I'm like, school yeah, is serious, school yeah. is school. You know, I, I was really um, serious about the program that I wanted to be in. And some schools didn't have it. And I saw that Jordan had it and it was closer. So, you know, I took that. Yeah, because when I'm pretty uh, glad that I chose that and that I came here. When I applied to Jordan, I saw a bunch of different like programs. Yeah, we have a lot of programs, yeah. which is really good. And like, like a lot of friends were joining JMAC, but I thought that like the way I would choose my program was I was like JMAC that that's a whack name. I was like, <laughs> like no 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 dissing. I just didn't <laughs> like the name. <laughs> when when I chose, I actually didn't even look at the name. I looked at the description of uh, I'm I'm a um, fine print person, so I, I read everything and I was like I can do that. I like that. That's a that's a good like way to do things. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it was best at the time. Now it's IB so. And I was like, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, I was exactly. only judging the book by its cover. <laughs> I was like, J-Mac, no thank you. And then I saw Panthers. I was like, that sounds dope. I was like, <laughs> Panthers, bro. So I joined it and j just for the name to be changed to uh, Leap. <laughs> oh, see, yeah. So that's another thing. Don't don't just choose it because you think the name's cool. It could yeah. always change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you came here from L.A. in third grade. Do you have any memories from L.A.? Um. Yeah, a lot of my family, they live out there or they live like in Texas or Louisiana. Um, I met my first best friend there. I played a lot of football before I got here, um, basketball. Uh, when I came here, I didn't play any sports because I was still like trying to get the feel of everything. Um, I did play baseball 10th grade year and I enjoyed that for the most part. So you... You came here in third grade, and then you started coming. You were, you started living around uh, Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like? Did you notice any differences from Long Beach to LA? Um, yes, it's very different from where I used to live to where I live here now. It's a huge difference. It's a lot better. Um, I love living in Big Speed. It's really quiet. You can walk around and. Yeah. Um, their shops and I loved going to First Friday like I couldn't wait till First Friday came me and my friends let's go we would meet up at, at my house because I live by Starbucks so we would just meet up and we would just go walking and then we would you know go hang out at my house after until they all left so where in LA did you used to live like east south um like I don't know exactly I would say like West Compton uh -huh. area so that's pretty it was pretty rough yeah. in a sense so I, n I wasn't really I was always in sports, so I would never go outside, but when I would try to, I was like, oh, I got to stay in the <laughs> gate, got to stay in my perimeter here, can't go outside, can't go too far, yeah. So was that um, was that a big motivator to why your parents decided to move to Big yeah. Spinos? Yeah, they got, they got better jobs. My dad actually works for the city, um, and my education got a lot better and opportunities, so that you know at first i was like i don't want to come here i'm leaving all my friends and yeah. but it was it was for the better and i still see them all the time so yeah so jordan you know people who don't come here mm -hmm. you know they say it's they talk a lot of smack about the school you know what mm -hmm. when i was in um eighth grade and we were choosing the schools i would want <laughs> to go to they were like everyone we you know we were, all the friends were trying to go to lakewood and go to poly oh, and um, everybody wants to go yeah to mm -hmm. yeah and so um i was like no I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Jordan. I don't think it's, I don't, it can't be that bad, you know? Yeah. So me and a, a nice group of my friends are actually here and we love it. They're all a part of sports and we came and did. So it's not, like you said, judging a book by its cover. Don't listen to what you hear. You have yeah. to see for yourself. Jordan's not bad at all. Jordan is not bad. I yeah. always heard, yeah. it, I feel like it's judged by the riots that happened mm -hmm. a while back, mm -hmm. but like, mm -hmm. the, history, you don't see anything history like that anymore. And um, people that don't 
go hear, you know, what they hear. It's just word of mouth. Don't ever listen to that. And a little sneak diss to other schools, if you don't mind. Uh, I know a <laughs> no. bunch of people that came from Lakewood. Um, that, like, we have a lot. Remember. We have a lot of people that transfer <clears throat> in and out yeah. a lot. Um, but no, we're um, it's school spirit. Yeah, I tell um, I tell them all the time. We have to be. You have to have good sportsmanship, and you have to be great people because in in the real life, you can't. Yeah. be like that you can't just be super competitive all the time you always have to you have, to yeah. have some friends yeah yeah so. and you never know you might you know that might be your boss one day or oh yeah so you <laughs> you might want to be you might just want to be polite to people yeah so i was talking to some people that transferred in from lakewood mm -hmm. and a big reason that i always heard was that the teachers sucked over there and like <laughs> they just weren't good teachers um that's another thing I, I have friends that say that and i look at it from their point of view and i look at it from the teacher's point of view and if i have the teacher i look at it from my point of view yeah. and i feel like if you're paying attention and you know you're not making yourself seen yeah, yeah. you're not being rude or aggressive towards the teacher they won't even not know not notice that you're not there but they won't pick on you or be in your face or be on you about things you just you know yeah, you're at, you're at school, act like you're at school, not like you're out with your friends. It always happens to be that the people that complain about teachers, always the ones that really don't pay attention or want to do the work. Yeah, and then teachers well, you know, are not there. To, <laughs> I have, I have to a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of adults in my life that tell me you better enjoy high school because when you get out, you're going to you're going to wish you can go back. And, you yeah. know, I'm, I look at the calendar in the ASB room all the time and I look at how far we're going and I'm like, I'm going to miss this. It's like, I, I'm always looking forward to going to college, but at the same time, I'm always hearing people talking about the workload and the stress that comes with college. And I'm like, I always thought people just go to college, have like parties and just have fun. <laughs> uh, I've heard that. And um, I just did a project on that recently where a lot of kids do go off to like big colleges, but they don't have full rides or the money or the grades and oh, yeah. they have to come back home and they don't tell their parents, you know, for a while that what happened. So don't mess up when you get there and, you know, try yeah. to do your best so that you can get those scholarships and you can stay wherever you want to be. What would you say to people who don't take school seriously so far? Or like if they're they, just they starting out like in ninth grade. Of what's offered here. Um, and they just take it as like a joke. Don't don't do that because I I did that for a semester in ninth grade and um, last year I had to take credit recovery for that. So please don't mess up because the more you mess up, you get the further you get and they're just gonna you know the you gotta do all you. of this and it's like if you don't get yeah. this done by this time you can't. You're going like to miss out on all the senior forget. activities. <laughs> yeah, no, no one's, it's not like middle school. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. you're fine. You can go. No, it's, it's, it's not like they're just going to forget about you failing is, four classes. This <laughs> is, this is really serious. So yeah. I think everyone should take it serious. Don't ever play around with your grades. And I feel like some students get discouraged really easily where yeah, they like, your they grade, around. your grade drops one little time and they're yeah. like, I can't get it back up. Yeah. And it's and like, then, yes, you can. Like I had a problem in the past. I would start on work and not finish it my teacher's like i'd rather you turn in something than nothing because nothing is gonna hurt you yeah something you know it's 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 something it's better to have something than exactly nothing. yeah and another thing is um well i feel like they would start messing around and see their grades drop and they'll be like oh, school's just too hard yeah. school really it's, it's not it's not it's hard. not hard you, if you pay, pay attention, attention and um you have great friends like mine like yeah. we we study together and i'm like you know we're in class and i i miss something <coughs> and i'm like what did, what did she just say what did he just say and yeah. they tell me and i'm like okay cool and I, um another thing like i said i'm pretty good you know i talk to a lot of staff talking to your teachers help a lot too the more you talk to your teachers the more they're willing to help you so to close off the podcast um what is the number one thing you would want to tell any freshmen coming in that think school is a joke or that oh i could fail these classes they're not really going to matter do not play around take this serious because your future is depending on what you do if you mess up now you're gonna you're gonna be upset when yeah. the ending is coming that you have to play catch up you don't want to have to play catch up or go and do other things and like see your friends having all their fun senior yeah, year and you're and having to you have, make up four you classes have a bunch of packets to do or you're missing out on activities yeah take take school serious don't blame yeah thank you for joining us on another episode of panther pod with our special guest Keyshawna ford Keyshawn our school's asb president all right well you're a great guest Keyshawn. Thank thanks you for being guys. on the thank show you. thank you
thank you. thank you for having me.